Hi, and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. Today I'd like to revisit an older subject that was discussed around two or three years ago on this channel, a subject that will be examined in a new light today. Around two to three years ago, I made a video analyzing the Mayaka skunk ape photographs. For those of you unfamiliar with them, you can go watch that video right now, or you can do with this brief rundown that I'm about to give. The Mayaka skunk ape photographs were sent to Florida's Mayaka Police Department back in 2000 and seemed to show an ape or primate-like creature crouching behind some silver saw palmetto bushes. There was a letter sent in with the photos from a witness who wished to remain anonymous who claimed to be an elderly woman who had seen this creature in her backyard. The witness claimed in the letter that they believed this creature to be an escaped orangutan of some kind and was sending the photos into the police department for concern that people's safety was in danger because of the animal. The video on the Crash Course Cryptozoology YouTube channel that covers the Mayaka skunk ape photographs is one that analyzes what's in it objectively. Instead, in this video, we will be going through an analysis of a certain perspective on the skunk ape photographs, a very important perspective, the perspective that they are hoaxed. With a set of images that are really as classic as the Mayaka skunk ape photographs, the idea of a hoax isn't always talked about because it's almost like it exists outside of that realm now culturally. Anybody who was getting into cryptozoology in the early 2000s like I was, you saw the Mayaka skunk ape photographs almost as often as you saw the patterson Gimlin film or any other famous set of photos. They're ingrained within that kind of culture, and because of this, the possibility of hoax isn't discussed very much, when of course in reality, most of these photos are more likely to be hoaxes than not, simply because, unless under very specific circumstances, it is simply more probable that it's hoaxed. Whether or not that's the case for the Mayaka skunk ape photographs is yet to be seen. We'll be analyzing a specific conclusion reached by an investigator who goes by Barry Spencer on Reddit. I came across Barry Spencer's ideas about the Mayaka photographs when I was actually looking at a very nice painting of the Mayaka photographs made by username Mixed Vegetables. Barry Spencer asserts many things about the Mayaka skunk ape photographs. Not only that they're hoaxed, but also asserts who they are most likely hoaxed by, how they were hoaxed, and even where they were hoaxed. So without further ado, we'll be delving into what Barry Spencer's main points are, and then addressing each of those points to see how much validity this specific iteration of the hoax theory has. There are around six or seven main points that Barry Spencer asserts about the Mayaka skunk ape photographs being a hoax. The first and most prominent and essential one for Barry's theory is that the perpetrator of the hoaxes is a man known as Justin Allen Arnold. Justin Allen Arnold has been tied to a few other known hoaxes in the past and is, at the very least, known for sure as an artist who enjoys creating strange creatures in his art. The subsequent points that all build off of this main theory are as follows. The letter accompanying the Mayaka skunk ape photographs has grammatical similarities to other letters and or testimonies sent in by people who are potentially in connection with other hoaxes connected to Justin Arnold. There are also allegedly narrative similarities to Arnold's actual life seen in the vague details given in the letter. Spencer also asserts that the skunk ape photographs are most likely photoshopped using a raccoon and as an inspiration for the image, building off of a Bigfoot model in a Ripley's Museum in Wisconsin where Arnold supposedly has extended family. Finally, there are supposedly geographical features of the sighting and of the letter that match up with where Arnold has allegedly some family in Florida. Vaguely outlined, these are all of the main points that will be addressed. If I happen to miss anything, I greatly apologize, there's a lot to go over, 
and I hope that somebody can correct me so that the conversation can continue to move forward in a productive manner. Of course, the biggest point to address first and foremost is the very idea that Justin Arnold can be connected to the Mayaka Skunk Ape photographs. There are two known hoaxes tied, albeit indirectly, to Justin Arnold. Barry Spencer actually lists a very large variety of videos that he believes are hoaxes perpetrated by Arnold, but these two cases are the only ones known to be hoaxes. The most significant one being the Fisherman Skunk Ape photograph. This is the Fisherman Skunk Ape photograph. It was allegedly sent into a news source by a man going by John Rodriguez, who claimed to have photographed this skunk ape bathing in a river. The connection actually comes from the news source, who, in their article, discusses that there is a connection to Justin Arnold via the fact that Justin Arnold's Bigfoot art looks extremely similar to what the subject looks like in this photo. This certainly does seem to be a hoax. The dead giveaway, aside from any connections to Justin Arnold, being the very anatomy of the creature. The hairline especially is extremely rigid and non-gradual, and this just isn't something that you see in animals in the wild. Especially on the brow ridges and surrounding the facial features of primates, things are softer, more gradual, they start sparse, and then they get furrier as the head goes backward. Unless this is a particularly well-groomed domestic skunk ape, this is in fact a hoax, and may in fact have some connection to Arnold via the similarity in his artwork. There are also some connections through some similar channels to Justin Arnold in a fur-bearing trout hoax. In fact, the trout is most likely one of Justin Arnold's physical artwork pieces, as the plaque that it was put on says that it was in fact mounted by Justin Arnold in 2015 in Wisconsin. We can attribute these hoaxes to Justin Arnold, Moving forward to the points Barry Spencer makes about the letter, Barry Spencer has posted the other testimonies, whether they be through text or through letters, that he attributes to Justin Arnold's hoaxes, and points out that in some of them, there is very similar language and grammatical patterns being displayed. In at least three of them, there is very folksy language being used, a lot of misspellings, a lot of grammatical errors, and in a few more, they're kind of the typical person posting. Not always capital letters, maybe the commas in the wrong place, maybe one or two misspellings, but no directly folksy language. Just kind of short and sweet texting. So all of those letters definitely display some similarities to each other. That's very interesting. However, it's hard to find any of those exact features in the Mayaka letter. In fact, the only thing that I was able to find in the Mayaka letter that would say Justin Arnold to me is the misspelling, of which there's actually only one word misspelled. The letter itself is actually quite verbose and well-spoken, and for the most part is free of grammatical errors. This doesn't mean that Justin Arnold didn't just up his game when he made this particular hoax, but it doesn't exactly by itself connect itself to the other letters. There's more about the letter, though, that Barry Spencer finds significant, one of them being the location listed in the letter as well as the witness who lives at said location. The sighting in the letter is said to have happened right off of Interstate 75 from an elderly woman on her back porch. There are some loose connections to Justin Arnold there, that being he has, allegedly, elderly family in Wisconsin whose house is similarly described to the back porch area, and that more of his family allegedly lives less than five minutes from Interstate 75 somewhere. Barry Spencer even points out that there is a patch of silver saw palmetto on that particular property that he believes is Justin Arnold's family near Interstate 75. I've yet to find any confirmation that Justin Arnold's family does live at this location or that he has family in Wisconsin. As for the patch of silver saw palmetto, it's interesting, but there are a few issues with it. For one thing, looking at the Mayaka photographs, it's clear that there are actually two bushes of silver saw in the photos. One in the foreground that is obstructing the subject, and one behind the subject off to the left facing the opposite direction. There is no such opposite facing bush in the photos provided by Barry Spencer. In fact, there's only one big bush that lines around a tree. Is it possible that in the 20 years or so since these photos were allegedly taken, that that bush has come down? Absolutely. While he doesn't make direct reference to that left bush, 
Barry Spencer does admit that the location seems to have changed from the photo over time. If it has, there's currently no sign of it as either there was no change or it's just been so long that now it just looks normal again. Unfortunately, these all appear to be kind of the looser connections, again, looked at by themselves, that Barry Spencer has presented. We have no way of confirming the family location information, and we have no way of confirming if this is the yard where this happened. The only significant feature of this by itself might be that this is in close proximity, obviously, to Mayaka State Park, but plenty of sightings happen around Mayaka State Park. It doesn't mean that Justin Arnold or some other hoaxer is involved in every single one of them just because it's near their location. Speaking of location, of course, Barry also brings up the appearance of the Mayaka skunk ape in the photographs and says that it looks greatly inspired by a Bigfoot model in the Ripley's Museum in Wisconsin, again, allegedly where Arnold has some extended family. You can see where inspiration might have come in. It's a similar shape, especially around the shoulder. The head is actually quite different, and I'm not sure if I would necessarily say that the hairstyle is the same because the photo is just so poor, but even if only as a silhouette, there are some fundamental similarities. Finally, Barry Spencer says that topped off this inspired by Ripley skunk ape model, or image rather, because he does believe it was digitally put in, uses the face of a raccoon to pull off the skunk ape's face. Comparing the two faces, there are fundamental similarities. You have an open mouth that opens downwards so that the inside of the mouth and the teeth are visible. You have the eye placement of the rather circular eyes that are somewhat far apart. Unfortunately, aside from this, that's where the similarities to raccoons end. The face displays much more similarity to something like an orangutan's face. There's a protrusion right above the upper lip that looks like the prognathism that we see in orangutan heads. The shape of the face around what looks like a hair mane is the exact same shape as an orangutan. The eyes are as far apart as an orangutan. And, of course, the mouth does not seem narrow like a raccoon's mouth, but instead rather rotund like an orangutan's mouth. Again, there are varying degrees of validity attached to each of these claims singularly. But what about them in a wide context? What about the fact that there are similarities to the Ripley's Museum Bigfoot and that the event allegedly took place quite near Arnold's general proximity and that Arnold has been attributed to skunk ape hoaxes in the past and that there is the potential for that house to be the location? It's all very compelling put together into a singular context. Unfortunately for the theory, it doesn't have the concrete evidence needed to reach its specific conclusion as the conclusion. There's unfortunately nothing that directly points to Justin Arnold being involved in a hoax like this, singularly or collectively. There's just not enough. The maybes are a bit too much of a maybe. They don't lean enough towards a yes. There's no concrete evidence that this property is even Justin Arnold's property. Or that this property in Wisconsin is, of course, where the museum might come in. The suggestion that a raccoon was used seems rather flimsy, especially considering, again, from an unprofessional perspective, that there really does seem to be no digital editing in these photographs. The letter connections kind of separate themselves out a bit too much, especially when it comes to the Mayaka letter. And the similarities to the palmetto bush on the property are arbitrary at best. There are, of course, silver saw palmettos all over Florida. Realistically speaking, if this is a hoax and the location is being lied about to any degree, this could have been taken almost anywhere. There's no reason to assume that it was this house, especially considering there's no evidence to suggest that this is Justin Arnold's family's house. All in all... The theory that this was hoaxed specifically by Justin Allen Arnold is quite interesting and does lead us some very interesting directions, but just has not built up the evidence to make a convincing conclusion. That does not mean that then the skunk ape photos are real. Obviously, assuming that there's a skunk ape to be photographed is a leap 
in and of itself. But any kind of claim requires evidence. Any kind of conclusion needs to have evidence. The burden of proof is on every kind of claim. There's a massive burden of proof for if this is a real animal in these photos. There is also a massive burden of proof to name a specific person as the hoaxer, where it was hoaxed, and how it was hoaxed. And unfortunately, that proof just hasn't come yet. Doesn't mean that it won't, but it's just not there right now. Perhaps it will be in the future, or perhaps another lead will take us a different direction that finally solves the mystery of these photographs. That being said, until next time.